So, at some point in 2021, a new crossover called Zoom Battle was announced, featuring my favorite character ever. Ever. Against Miguel, who I have no strong opinions on. Cool. This is probably the only prediction you will ever see me make, and for a few reasons. 1. Doing the full research on a character is tedious. 2. My throat would probably be sore once I'm done recording this. And 3. This is a battle where stats might actually be irrelevant. More on that later. Also, can I just say how weird is that crossover Colosseum and Smash Bracket have so few predictions? Come on guys, the rule set isn't that complex. I don't think there's anyone here that doesn't know what Smirgol is all about. It learns a sketch, which can be used to learn nearly every move in Pokemon, which specifically in Crossover Colosseum is huge because Pokemon are given every move they can learn. Thanks to this, Smirgol has a huge list of options. I'm not going to go too deep into specific moves, but rather what effects those moves have. On offense, outside of regular tackles, scratches, punches and kicks, Smirgle can attack with mirages, mud, acid, shadows, vacuum, ice, air of varying temperatures, different kinds of blades, horns, rocks, kisses, electricity, fire, seeds, light, aura, leaves, water, the power of nature, pollen, sound waves, bombs, telekinesis, arrows, poisonous sludge, diamonds, seismic waves, space power, moon power, wings, meteors, gears, bones, and those are just general categories. Going to more specific attacks, Smirgle can reduce the HP of the opponent to match its own with Endeavor, cut the target's current HP in half with Super Fang or Nature's Madness, combine its own HP and the targets and split it equally between the two with Pain Split, counter any direct attack that it just received with 2 times the strength with Mirror God or Hunter, Copy the attack the opponent was planning to use with a 50% boost with me first. Trap the opponent while dealing residual damage over time with Infestation, Grab, Sun Tom, Fire Spin, Clamp, Whirlpool and Magma Storm. Attack the target despite them protecting themselves and nullifying their protection with Faint. Destroy barriers from the opponent that decrease damage taken while dealing damage with Real Break or Psychic Fangs. Attack the opponent ignoring their defense and evasion changes with Chip Away. Absorb half of the damage dealt with Gigadrain, Leech Life, Parabolic Charge, Horn Leech, Drain Punch or Oblivion Wing. Drop flying targets to the ground with Smackdown or Thousand Arrows. Hit the opponent with an invisible attack using Extrasensory. Strike the opponent even if they are flying high up with Thunder, Sky Uppercut, Hurricane and also with Smackdown or Thousand Arrows. Make the ground erupt under the opponent with air power. Burrow underground to 10 attack with Dig. Steal the stat increases from the target with Spectral Thief. Attack the opponent using their own attack potency with Foul Play. Tear the target along with the space surrounding it with Spatial Rend. Attack with Moongeist Beam or Sunseed Strike which ignore passive abilities that could potentially negatively affect their success, damage or effects, remove grounded or floating hazards with rapid spin, see and attack the opponent with psychic energy in the future with future sight, disappear and then reappear to make a surprise attack on the opponent and ignores protective moves with shadow force, appear right next to the target and strike while ignoring protective moves with hyperspace hole, fly with fly, or distort time with Roar of Time. It also has moves that never miss. Disarming voice lets out a charming cry that does emotional damage. Smart Strike stabs the target with a sharp horn. Aura Sphere lets loose a blast of Aura Power. Magical Leaf scatters leaves that chase the target. Aerial Ace can faust the target with speed and ten slashes. Shadow Punch throws a punch from the shadows. Magnet Bomb launches steel bombs that stick to the target. Faint makes the user approach the target disarmingly to then throw a sucker punch. Shock Wave strikes the target with a quick jolt of electricity. And Sweep Shots star shaped rays at the opponent. Outside of direct attacks, Smirgle can increase its own stats by a factor of 4, specifically attack, defense, special attack, special defense, speed, accuracy, and evasion 
and decreased those of the target down to one fourth. Even crazier, Smigel can combine its own raw offensive and or defensive stats with those of the target and split them evenly between the two with power split or guard split, swap its own raw speed stat with that of the target with speed swap, or even create a bizarre area where those slower get the mob fierce with trick room. It is also able to afflict the target with status conditions, such as confusion which has a 33 chance of making those affected to hurt themselves instead of user the intended move, infatuation which has a 50% chance of making those affected to be unable to act instead of using their intended move, taunt which prevents the target from using moves that do not deal direct damage, anchor which forces the target to repeat its last move several times, torment which prevents the target from repeating the same move twice in a row, Heal block which prevents the target from using heal moves, abilities, or held items that recover health. Imprison which prevents the target from using any moves that the user also knows. Leech seed which steals the target's health over time. Paralysis which decreases the speed of the target to one half and has a 25% chance of making those affected to be unable to act instead of using their intended move. Sleep which makes the target unable to move. Burn, which halves the attack stat of the target and deals residual damage over time. Poison, which deals residual damage over time. And Bad Poison, which deals increasing residual damage over time. Smeagol can also cause freeze, which works like a better sleep condition, but is tied to some ice that moves as a secondary effect instead of it being able to freeze directly. It can also nullify the target's passive ability with Simple Beam or Worry Seal, copy the target's ability with roleplay, or swap its own ability with the target with skill swap. And I think it's a good time to talk about Smirkle's ability. Smirkle can have own tempo which prevents confusion, technician which boosts the power of weaker moves, or moody which randomly boosts a stat by two stages with decreasing another random stat by one stage. While Smirkle will most likely be given moody in the episode, I personally think that Technician is better. First, because it makes several of Smiggles most viable. Second, because Moody turns the debate into a RNG nightmare. And third, because Emerald could copy Moody, which will turn the debate into a double layered RNG nightmare. I might as well talk about Smiggles' item, and I have considered quite a few. Leftovers, which heals over time. Life Orb, which increases the potency of attacks by 30%, but takes away 10% of the holder's health per attack. Quick Claw, which 20% of the time lets the user move first, and Razor Claw or Scope Lens, which increases critical heal ratio by one stage. Overall, given Smigel can already heal itself with several moves, and has moves that increase its evasion, speed, offenses, and reduce the target's accuracy, I think Razor Claw or Scorp Lens are the best item, because after using Focus Energy, all of Simigol's attacks will result in a critical hit. The quick explanation of critical hits is that they are attacks that hit the target's pressure points, have a 1.5 times boost, and ignore both the reduction of offensive stats of the user and the increase of defensive stats of the target. Smirgle also has access to protecting moves. Endure lets it survive any attack with 1 HP. Protect creates a barrier that stops all attacks. Detect makes it evade all attacks. Spiky Shield and Baneful Bunker work like Protect, but also the former removes 1 8 of the max HP of the attacker if they make contact, and the latter poisons the attacker if they make contact. And King's Shield makes it take a defensive stance while it protects itself from moves that deal direct damage, and also lowers the attack stat of any attacker who makes direct contact by one stage. Using any move from this category halves the chance of success of future uses of itself of any other move inside this list until any of them fails or Smiggle chooses a move outside this list. As a second to last mention, I'll say several moves that I didn't quite know how to group with others. Foresight, Others Loot and Miracle Light can nullify any boost the target applies to its evasion stat. Lucky Chant prevents the target from receiving critical hits. Aromatherapy, Refresh and Heal Bell can heal Poison, Paralysis and Burn. Mist prevents the stats of the user from being lowered by others. Psycap copies the stat stages of the target, 
Haze resets all stat stages to zero for everyone. Topsy Turby reverses all stat changes from the target from positive to negative and vice versa. Magnet Rise makes the user levitate. Light Scream reflect an Aurora Bay half the damage of special attacks, physical attacks or both respectively. Gravity increases gravity which grounds everyone and increases their accuracy. Snatch steals the effects of moves that do not deal direct damage. And Teleport teleports. If everything else fails, Smiggle has two options left. Use Transform to turn into the opponent and hope to have a better shot. Or use one of its instant victory conditions. To be precise, the moves Roar, Whirlwind, Dragon Tail and Circle Throw force the opponent to lead and the moves Sheer Call, Fissure, Guillotine and Horn Drill can dunk out the opponent in one hit. These last four moves are really imprecise, but the moves Lock On and Mind Reader can guarantee they hit. As a side note, Lock On and Mind Reader can make Fissure hit even if the opponent is flying high up, but cannot ignore the opponent being a flying type or having the ability levitate. So I am assuming that's a game mechanic. And let me say, I have not mentioned everything related to Smirgle. I recommend reading the document in the description for a more detailed explanation of every move I mentioned and those I left out. Emerald, on the other hand, as a fighting game character, is more straightforward. He has punches, kicks and the occasional energy attack. But outside of that, he can throw fire out of his feet, punch and kick hard enough to create explosions, summon cheese who can tackle others while flying, even being able to surround himself in a blue aura while doing so, or spin to create tornadoes. Emerald can stop and shock others with the paralyzed dagger, stretch his arms, use the magic hand, which can either come from the ground or appear on his fist, Distort space with chaos control to hide or create areas of distorted space that damage on contact. Use the Pico Pico Hammer as a regular hammer and to create tornadoes. Shock people by turning his arms into electric prongs. Morph his arms into liquid tentacles. Make big leaps to close the gap between him and the opponent and hit them hard enough to bounce off the ground. Fire shock waves. Throw or summon rocks. Fire ultrasonic waves. Throw liquid projectiles. Come in on opponents with a spin attack, flick opponents with the big hand, barrow underground to throw a surprise uppercut, blow himself up, surviving on a sliver of health, and use several kinds of mice that can temporarily blind opponents. For example, the two square bomb and the backcracker pursuit opponents on the ground and on the air, respectively, even if they are hiding underground or in distorted space. Roaming Chaos creates a spot of distorted space that follows Emerald until it hits the opponent. Mole Bomb puts a bomb that barrows underground for a surprise attack, and Chaos Splash makes spiders that spawn tentacles that attack the opponent. Which, yes, also blinds. Outside of direct attacks, Emer can work with Chaos Control, Glide, Fly, bust himself up with a Jet Booster, Double Jump, Block Attacks, which negates damage and makes the opponent flinch when blocking contact moves, heal himself, adopt several fighting poses, increase his attack and defensive power, increase his acceleration and speed, and even decrease or increase the effects of gravity in his body. And they have yet to talk about Emerald's main ability. Emerald is capable of adopting techniques either by observation or by having them used against him. This process has no apparent limitations and will continue to look indefinitely, whether Emerald wants to or not. What Emerald can copy is not limited to what I have already mentioned. It can be how someone runs, which pretty much gives Emerald their speed, how they jump, their color, voice, and way of speaking. He has also copied Asian melee weapons and modern weaponry, but off screen. But Emerald isn't just a copycat. Based on techniques he has learned, he can create upgraded versions of them. He has improved Meteor Crush to throw more rocks, Sonic Meteor to create a homing attack, Chaos Bars to triplicate himself, Chow Revolution to summon cheese in two places at once, and even Meltdown to not suffer any damage. Somehow. 
He can also create combo techniques derived from a character's techniques, which consist of a flurry of regular attacks to knock out the opponent if a lot attacks land. Maybe. To be clear, knockouts in Sonic Battle are weird and work more like a score system, with characters being knocked out up to 10 times, but whether they are fine or not after the battle not being determined by what happens in it, but by the story. But combo techniques are clearly portrayed as being the strongest techniques Emerald has. Despite all this, Emerald has a big weakness. He can overload, which makes him become highly unstable and revert to his innate destructive program, causing him to go on a complete rampage and losing all self-control. And thanks to Geralt's programming, if he manages to regain control, he will terminate himself. Overloading Emerald is another top. So far, it has happened by learning too many techniques, though he only had a single KS Emerald at the time, which limited his capabilities, and by copying a weapon far above his capabilities. Said weapon was stated to destroy several stars, so it's pretty difficult to tell how powerful something has to be in order to overload him. Like with Smirgle, I'll leave a document listing all of Emerald's skills, which you shall read. So, after going over everything I think is relevant, there's something else about Smeagol's moves that I think is important to talk about before discussing who I think wins. Because of how many it has, there are several that are of class or useless, so Smeagol wouldn't use them. For example, moves that prevent the opponent from escaping like Lock, Mean Loop or Spiderweb are useless because if Emerald escapes, Smeagol will win instantly. Moves like Explosion, Fetish Song, or Destiny Bond are useless because they will only be useful to force a draw if Smirgle thinks it can win. In which case, Weibo will make a safe feint on purpose instead of escaping or giving up. There are no stakes in this fight that will make a draw better than a loss. Moves like Mimic, Copycat, and Sketch are pretty inconvenient given Smirgle cannot choose what move to copy, only whatever Emerald used last. Magic Room, Trick, and Switcheroo are useless because Emerald has no hard item and Smirgle can see that. You can argue they will work on the Pico Pico Hammer, but these moves cannot be used to, for example, prevent Smirgle itself from using Bone Club which requires it to hold a bone, so personally I don't think so. Outside of those, there are a lot of attacks that are outclassed by a stronger counterpart, like Ember being basically a weaker flamethrower, or boosting moves that are outclassed by others like Dragon Dance being of class by Gear Shift. There are other useless moves, not because they are useless in a vacuum, but because they are useless against Emerald and a waste of time for Smeagol. Transform is an instant loss, because Emerald's body doesn't work without Chaos Emeralds, and Smeagol doesn't have them. Status effects including Confusion, Sleep, Burn, and Poison will be ineffective against Emerald because he's a robot, and Giga Dream on Lich Lag will work, because Emerald has no nutrients to absorb or blood to drain. I know some people are going to bring out that these moves can work on non organic Pokemon like Magnemite, Porygon, Shedinja, Baltoy, Flink, Magierna, or Iron Bundle. But the way I see it, several of these Pokemon can eat, sleep, and most of them can breathe, so they have to be biological to an extent. And some may argue that Emerald should be immune to poison moves in general, but I don't think so. If Smirgle uses, say, Poison Jab, well Ermer will not get poisoned, he will still take a jab, which should affect him. Outside of this, there are moves that I'm not actually sure if they will work on Emerald or not. A track, for example, can work if Smirgle is female given Emerald identifies as male, and was shown to have feelings, but at the same time he had to be explained what sadness was, so I don't really know. For similar reasons, I'm not sure if moves like Captivate, Glare, Noble Roar, Scary Face, or Roar will work. Heart Swap leads to the debate of whether Emerald has a soul or not. Mind Reader leads to the debate of whether the move actually reads minds or not. Screech and Metal Sound leads to the debate of whether Emerald will raise his hands to protect his yes from sour or not. And Simple Bean, Worry Seed, Gastro Acid, Roleplay, and Skill Swap leads to the debate of whether Emerald's ability to copy techniques will be considered an ability within Pokemon's logic or not. Lastly, Thunder Wave and Nassau might not work because Emerald has no muscles to paralyze. And yes, I know Emerald has been immobilized by electricity before, but that was a constant strip of electricity rather than a singular discharge. It came from a machine Eggman had to modify specifically to affect Emerald, and Emerald was fine once it was turned off. Outside of that, this is the part where stats are irrelevant. 
his middle is weaker and slower, he can even have attack potency and durability with Emerald using Power Split and Guard Split, and Swap Speed with his Swap of Freak Room. And if Emerald is weaker and slower, he can copy his Beagle's attack and strength support and run technique. So, with that sequel, I think it's a good idea to discuss how the Arsenal sponsor. Most of, but not all of Smeagol's stat boosting and the buffing moves are countered by Emerald passively copying them, and Emerald has no reason to not try to at least match Smeagol. And every time Smeagol stops to boost or heal itself, or to weaken Emerald, it leaves itself open for Emerald to attack. Even with the added bonus of guaranteed critical hits after a focus energy, Emerald not only should be able to copy the move, but given he can recreate the Pico Pico Hammer and has recreated the weapons before, I think he could recreate the Razor Claw. Gravity could be countered by Ember reducing the effects of gravity on himself. Whirlwind, Dragon Tail, and Circle Throw are countered by Ember probably being fast enough to just run back to keep fighting. Leech Seed or Spikes and Trapping moves like Clamp or Infestation are nullified by its rapid speed, so I would assume techniques like Sonic Ballet or Gil Tornado will have the same effect. Being frozen, moves that do not miss, and telekinesis could be countered by hiding in distorted space and reappearing somewhere else. Skydrop or seismic toss could be countered by blowing up with meltdown. And several of Smirgol's ground type attacks can be dodged by flying, including Fissure. So, one out of four times Smirgol goes for a one hit KO move, Emmer can just fly to dodge it. You could also argue that, since Smirgle needs to use May Reader of Lock Combo to land a one hit KO move, and Emmer should be aware of what his copy techniques do, then Emmer would realize that the fact that Smirgle is making sure its next attack hits means that it's going for a dangerous move, giving him enough time to react and block it with a guard skill. So it may be too generous of an argument. Meanwhile, Smirgle can counter Emmer's flight with Smackdown or Thousand Arrows, his healing with Heal Block. Taunt, which should also prevent Emmer from using guard skills, or even steal Emmer's healing with Snatch, use Earthquake to hit Emmer even if he's digging through the ground, use Thunder, Sky Uppercut, or Hurricane to hit Emmer even if he's flying through the air, punish Emmer's contact moves with Spiky Shield, King's Shield, or Shell Trap, knock away Emmer's drop attacks with Rapid Spin, nullify Emmer's stat boost with Clear Smoke, Haze, or Tupsic Turby, or even steal them with Spectral Teeth, use Faint or Hyper Space Hole to hit through Emmer's guard skills, and use Imprison to prevent Emmer from using any move he copies from Smeagol. Now, what have things the other dots have an answer for? The thing is, Emmer simply has direct attacks, which yeah, Smeagol can protect from, but not forever, and some trap attacks that will be harder to see. On the other hand, Smeagol has, let's say, more broken stuff. If either attract, glare, thunder wave, or nasal can work on Emerald, then he will be less likely to act and or his speed will be cut in half. If any of Smeagol's ability changing moves can modify Emerald's ability to copy techniques, then his main advantage disappears. But, to be fair, Smeagol will have to figure out that Smeagol is copying its techniques instead of assuming he just happens to also know them. It can use forest curse to give Emerald weaknesses, Use Anchor to force Emerald to use the same move over and over, and combine it with either Torment or Disable. And while I don't think that will make Emerald use Struggle, what I think you will do is force him to use his techniques that he didn't finish capturing, passively heal with Aqua Ring, cut Emerald's current health in half with Super Fire or Nature's Madness, boost itself with damaging moves like Nitro Charge or Power Up Punch, or heal itself with damaging moves like Train Punch or Parabolic Charge so it doesn't leave itself open for attack, use omnidirectional moves like Surf or Discharge, which will be harder to dodge, surprise Emmer with Earth Power or Extra Sensory, tear space or restore time with Spatial Rain or Roar of Time, and several of its moves go the area to be light speed, which I didn't take into account while writing this document, sorry. And of course, Emmer doesn't have much to do if Smirgle decides to use Lock On and a one hit KO move, outside of that argument that I gave before and flying out of Fissure. However, there is one weird and kinda funny victory condition for Emmer. There is a combo in Pokemon involving the moves Imprison and Transform. You use Imprison to prevent the opponent from using any move you know, then use Transform to turn into the opponent and have all of its moves, therefore preventing them from using any of the moves they know. If Emmer begins using too many of Smeagol's moves, then Smeagol will use Imprison, 
and after using Imprison, Transform will seem like an instant victory from Swinkle's perspective, and I already explained why it will be a victory for Emerald. So, to give my abridged thoughts on the matchup, assuming equal as stats thanks to the abilities of both, Smiggle has more counters to Ember's abilities than the other way around. Smiggle's abilities that Ember has no counters for are more significant than the abilities Ember has that Smiggle can counter, and Smiggle has moves confirmed to knock out in one hit, while Smiggle's techniques that could be argued to be instant knockouts can be argued against having that effect. However, the longer the fight goes on, the more Ember's chances increase. Both because he's adding Smiggle's arsenal to his own, and because Smiggle will be more likely to use Imprison and then transform. With this perspective in mind, the battle comes down to the personality of the character. Emerald is easy, he enjoys fighting, he even considers it playing, and likes to learn techniques. But while this means he won't actively try to finish off Smiggle as fast as possible, if Smiggle uses a one hit KO move and Emerald manages to dodge it, I think Emmer will stop messing around after realizing Smirgle is dangerous. On the other hand, Smirgle's personality is much harder to define because we are talking about a species rather than an individual. All we know is that it is a territorial Pokemon, thanks to its Pokedex entries, and that it might confuse Emmer for a steel type Pokemon, meaning it will use special moves over physical ones given steel types on average lean physically defensive and that it will be less likely to use poison type attacks or its more powerful normal type attacks. And I really don't want to check every episode of the anime to see if Miru has a consistent portrayal. In conclusion, there are arguments for both of them winning. Gone to my head, I will say Smiru wins, but I will not bet against them. Of course, if it turns out that either of them have a fit that puts them a more billion times above the other, then the whole debate part of this prediction was pointless. But I have seen basically all of Emerald's direct feats, and I don't think Smiro won't get anything that at the very least approaches that. To finish off, I will say you could argue against Emerald getting any of his feats from Sonic X due to it not being a good representation of him as a character. That was a fun fact. Have fun. Now you might be wondering what all the extra time in the video is for. Contrary to what some people might tell you, there's actually more to an episode in a Versus show than the debate and who wins. When it comes to the analysis section, I don't think there will be any problem for Emeralds. But Ink has already said that Pokemon analysis can be hard to write since he's describing a species rather than an individual. However, you can actually avoid this problem with Smeagol. Given it has to have encountered certain Pokemon in order to have learned certain moves, you can just make up a story for it. And yes, that will be borderline fan fiction, but I think it's for the good of the episode, and technically certain things are true. For example, this mirror will indeed have to be in Dialga's presence in order to learn Robo of Time. He just has to be careful about what he mentions for Smigol in its analysis, as to not make people think that for example, Smirgle won because he was scaled to Arceus, or that he lost despite being scaled to Arceus. I also really hope its analysis won't be filled with jabs at it due to how much hate this Pokemon gets in competitive play. While one or two jokes will be fine, I think it's important to note that every Pokemon is someone's favorite Pokemon. As for the fight, this is basically the equivalent of being left in a room with thousands of Lego blocks and being told to make something cool. The potential is basically endless. You could focus on where their arsenals overlap, where they counter each other, have both react to the things the other can do that don't make sense, reference other battles from basically any other franchise or even other versus shows, etc. I could be all day thinking of what cool things could be done for the fight, but I really should. If I keep going, I think even the coolest episode in existence will disappoint me. There are three things that I really think should be kept in mind. 1. Everything included in the fight has to be in the analysis. Obviously, I don't expect everything in the analysis to be included in the fight, but that didn't want to see either of them using something that wasn't mentioned. 2. Because what both of them have are techniques shared with other characters, there shouldn't be a big focus on techniques and moves of Pokemon and Sonic characters that have appeared and will appear in past and future Smash Bracket and Crossover Colosseum episodes. 
For example, it will be kind of lame if Simir will begin using all of the moves Pikachu used against Pac-Man, or if Emerald used several of Tails' moves that he will use against Twilight Sparkle. Of course, there's nothing wrong with using moves and techniques in a vacuum. I'm just saying that there should be variety with both fighters using moves and techniques from several other characters and not focus on a single arsenal. 3. The choreography has to make sense. I know the attractive of this fight is the sheer number of abilities both have. But if we are going to have moments like, I don't know, Smeargle using Earthquake after seeing Emer can fly, or Emer going for physical attacks after being hurt by Spiky Shield, then I'd rather have both of them using a smaller pool of abilities. I really don't think this will actually be a problem, but Mario vs Mega Man from Smash Bracket has been stuck in my mind for a while. The other things important for this fight will be the setup and tone. The setup writes itself. Just have Emerald enter the territory of Smeagol, notice all the marks Smeagol has put all over the place, then Smeagol jumps at him to make him leave. If the battle could take place in some old ruins, it will be even better. The will reference spot where Emerald was discovered first by the government and how Smeagol was available to be captured in the ruins of all back in Jotun. What tone will be better for the fight is very subjective, but I think a non-serious tone will be for the best especially when there's so much comedic potential for this fight. Also, I'm aware of all the potential body horror or general gross potential that comes from Smeagol, especially from moves like Soft Boil or Autotomize, but please steer away from the cruise side of the fight. Please. Also, this is probably a battle that will be better with my dialogue. There isn't much for Ember to answer back to someone that says its own name over and over, but hey, if you can prove me wrong, then go ahead. And a minor note to the conclusion, if Ember somehow wins, please be careful on how you explain his victory. It would suck if it was basically Ember won because Smeagol picked the wrong moves, and it had nothing to do with Ember's skill. This might also be a fight worthy of a follow-up video or a Q&A, because I doubt the episode could break up everything both can do in an interesting way. Or maybe it can, I don't know. Thank you all for sticking with me until the end of the video. I have no idea how long it will turn out to be. Good luck, Emerald, you will need it.